Amendment 3 of the 18th edition has just been released by the IET and in this video from Learn Electrics we will look at how this affects us and what we need to do to comply with the regulations. We will talk about the new amendment and what this means to us in our everyday work and how you can get your free copy of Amendment 3 and what to do with it. Let's begin by saying that for most of us there is no need to buy a new wiring regulations book. If you already have the Amendment 2 Brown Book then the IET have given you, me, us a no cost solution to keeping up to date with the new amendment. BS 7671 18th edition Amendment 3 is now live and takes effect from the 31st of July 2024. Amendment 3 is available as a downloadable and printable PDF and we will tell you how to download your copy at the end of this video. The actual amendment comprises 10 pages, most of which is supporting information for the single new regulation. The IET have called this amendment the Amendment 3 Bolt-On Pack, as we shall see. The IET have said that if you already have the Brown Amendment 2 2022 book, there is no need to buy a new book if you already have this Brown book. The Blue Book has been withdrawn and is no longer in use. The IET say that we should not use the Blue Book or the Amendment 1 supplement. The Brown Book is the one that we should be using. If you have the Brown Amendment 2 2022 book plus the Amendment 3 2024 bolt-on pack, then this will effectively convert your book into Amendment number 3. So, Brown Book plus the bolt-on pack equals Amendment 3. Job done, minimal cost. So what is the new amendment and how should we deal with it? This is what I do with new amendments and regulation changes. I always print two paper copies of the amendments. I keep one copy, which will remain intact, stapled together in the back of the book so that the amendment can be read in its entirety at any time of my choosing. The second copy will be cut and pasted onto the relevant pages in the brown book so that I always have the new regulation or changes where they are most useful in the most appropriate place in the book. Let me show you what I mean. Shown here, I've cut out the introduction to Amendment 3 2024 from page 5 of the bolt-on pack. It fits quite nicely onto page 11 of the brown book at the end of the section on Amendment 2's introduction. A small dab of print stick and it is secured in place as highlighted in yellow here. Apply the same method to page 9 of the Amendment 3 bolt-on pack. Page 9 shows the new regulation 530.3.201 and there is a convenient gap at the bottom of page 154 in the brown book and this will just allow this to be pasted in as shown by the bottom red box. And we should apply this method to all 10 pages as required. For me, the three most important pages from the 10 page bolt-on pack are pages 8, 9 and 10. We've just covered page 9, so page 8 can go into part 2 definitions of the brown book. And page 10 should ideally go into the index close to the other protected devices, perhaps on page 600 of the brown book. This is regulation 530.3.201, the new regulation that has just been added. This is what Amendment 3 is about, just these few lines shown here. All the other nine pages of the amendment pack are providing supporting information for this regulation. You will sometimes see this black line in the outside border. This is how the wiring regulations book 
shows a change from the previous addition or amendment. The change might be an addition, something new, as here. It might be an error correction, a spelling correction, or something removed or moved to another part of the book. Something is different. Pay attention to black lines. They are there to help you. The next request then is, please tell me what the new regulation means. To do this, we've edited a video from a few weeks ago and updated it with the actual regulation as released on the 31st of July. It's answered several questions that were being asked, mostly about exams and Amendment 3. Follow the video and you'll have no trouble implementing Amendment 3 into your working life or college studies. First of all, BS 7671 2018, Amendment number 3 to 2024, was released 31st of July 2024 and takes full effect immediately. There is no grace period. We've been asked many questions recently and some of those are shown below, such as what it is about, how will it affect my exams, do I need to resit the 18th edition exam? And is this the 19th edition? And we've already talked about new books and the effective dates, but it's good to recap on these. Let's split this into three separate topics. The amendment, the book and the exam. So what is the 18th edition Amendment 3 2024? Take a look at page 9 of the Amendment 3 pack. Regulation 530.3.201, the new regulation, tells us that Selection and erection of equipment for protection shall take account of appropriate use of either a unidirectional protective device or a bidirectional protective device. And the note below informs us that Product standards as listed in Appendix 1 for some protective devices, including RCCBs, RCBOs, circuit breakers and AFDDs, require these devices to be marked to indicate if they are unidirectional, for example, in and out, or line and load, or arrows. So, a unidirectional device can only permit current flow in one direction and must be marked with the direction of flow. This implies that a bidirectional device will permit current flow in either direction and will show no markings for direction of flow. Definitions tells us that a bidirectional protective device is a protective device where it is intended by the manufacturer that a source of supply it's connected to either or both sets of connection terminals. And definitions further informs us that a unidirectional protective device is a protective device where it is intended by the manufacturer that a source of supply is only connected to one defined set of connection terminals. Let's look at some examples. Single module compact RCBOs typically contain electronic circuits to provide the residual current protection. They may be damaged or not function correctly if the power flow direction is reversed. Such devices are therefore unidirectional, as are many AFDDs. These devices will be marked by the manufacturer with the correct power flow direction. This could be line and load, in and out, or just arrows, as shown. And therefore, protective devices without direction markings are bidirectional. An RCCB, for example, is a two-module wide device and was typically an electromechanical device, although some electronic RCCBs are available. If the RCCB is unmarked, power can flow in either direction. They may, however, be marked to indicate the line and neutral terminals of the device. 
These two simple drawings should help in understanding the marking concept. Marked devices are unidirectional and unmarked devices are bidirectional. What do we mean by unidirectional? Take your typical electric kettle. Power will flow from the house supply to the socket and then to the kettle. Current can only flow from the supply to the kettle. The kettle cannot send power back to the consumer unit. It is not a power source, it is a power user. Now look at the next two slides. We can plug our electric vehicle into the charging station at home and charge it overnight. Current flows from the house supply to the car. That is power flow in one of two directions. But we can have power flow from the car to the house. We may have a self-charging vehicle or we may have charged the car at work and now wish to transfer that stored energy in the car batteries to the storage batteries in the house. This would be the second direction of power flow. Bidirectional power flow is possible and the correct protective devices must be in place to give the required safety for persons and livestock and to reduce the possibilities of fire in whichever direction the power flows. The next question is, when will it become a compulsory requirement? BS 7671 2018 Amendment 3 to 2024 was released 31st of July 2024 and will take effect immediately. There will be no crossover period between Amendment 2 and Amendment 3. There will not be the usual six month grace period to use either amendment in your work. You will be expected to implement Amendment 3 into your work from the 31st of July 2024, the day of release. This is always a question that is asked and was mentioned earlier in this video. Do I need to buy a new book? If you already have the Brown Amendment 2 book, then all that's required is for you to download and print the Amendment 3 document from the IET website and we will give details of this at the end of the video. The Brown Amendment 2 book plus the Amendment 3 document will make your book Amendment 3 compliant. In this instance, a new book does not need to be purchased. And how will exams and assessments be affected by the new amendment? What if I've already started the Amendment 2 exam course? This type of question is always asked when there are changes to the regulations. If you've already started on a BS7671 Wiring Regulations exam course, there will be a short crossover period to allow you to complete the 18th edition exam to Amendment 2. Those that are close to finishing courses with assessments to Amendment 2 will have the opportunity to complete their course. After a short set period, all exams and assessments will be to Amendment 3. But to be honest, the changes are so simple to understand that they should not present a problem in any exam. Another frequent question. Will I need to reset the 18th edition exam? The answer is no. If you already have any 18th edition Wiring Regulations exam certificate, then you do not need to reset the exam. It is assumed that your prior learning and experience will be sufficient for you to understand and incorporate the Amendment 3 changes into your work. And another question that is asked. If I have a 17th edition Wilding Regs exam certificate, can I sit a 30 question refresher course for the 18th edition Amendment 3? The answer here is no, you cannot do this. Refresher courses to upgrade from 17th edition to 18th edition are not offered. Everybody that wants an 18th edition exam qualification must sit the full 60 question exam. And last but not least, how will Amendment 3 affect periodic inspections and existing installations? 
The electrical industry trade bodies are considering the impact of Amendment 3 on existing installations and will seek general agreement on suitable classification codes to be used when completing an EICR. And now, how to get your free PDF of the new Amendment 3 bolt-on pack. This is how I downloaded my copy from the IET website, a simple two-minute process. Once downloaded, save the PDF and print a paper copy to go into your brown book. In the search box for Google, or whatever you use, type in Download IET 18th Edition Amendment 3 and press Return or Search. An option similar to this should be displayed. This is the link to the IET website, so choose this option. This next page will be displayed, and towards the bottom of the page you will see the Download Amendment 3 box. Click on this. Next, a short Who Are You form will pop up. Name, email address, etc. Job title, self-employed, etc. And the usual acceptance of their data protection policy. Click Submit and that is it. The PDF will be on its way. Check your email inbox and the PDF should be there waiting for you. Save it, print it and most importantly read it before putting it into the back of your brown book. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and I hope that you found this video both useful and informative with some more knowledge put away into your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.